the Atman, Part 2A3, Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha. The being history knows yet to this day as the wise sage began life around the date we now call 563 B.C., around the time of the early golden age of Greek society. He was born a prince to Queen Mahamaya of the Kilia clan and King Sudhadona of the Shakya clan. He grew up in opulent luxury until one day he rejected his material wealth and fled to the wilderness to live in the style of an ascetic monk. Following a period of self-renunciation and emancipating emaciation, Siddhartha returned to society again, this time as the Buddha, arguably the wisest religious teacher of all time. The greatest trick the Buddha ever pulled was to transcend existence entirely. He simply became so enlightened with wisdom that he disappeared from material reality. He did not die. He did not live. He did not unlive nor undie. He simply stopped being. Similar feats of transubstantiation of flesh to pure spirit are rare but not absent in the Western traditional myths. Enoch and Jesus both vanished from the face of the earth, and both have since seemed to be able to reappear at will to serve as messengers for the word of God. The myth of Enoch being translated into the Metatron angel, and the myth of Jesus transubstantiating three days after his death by crucifixion, both bear similarities and differences to this myth of Buddha. The Buddha sat beneath the Bodhi tree and meditated until he confronted his own innermost self as a reflection in the water. He named the reflection of his own innermost self Mara, and facing his fear of Mara, defeated it, and facing his fear of losing Mara, defeated that too. And when he had defeated Mara, and Mara vanished powerless, the Buddha Siddhartha Gautama transcended. Because the Buddha saw his goal of transcending reality as an ultimate good, he manifested his self opposed to it as the ultimate evil. In this Tibetan Buddhist Tonka painting from the Himalayan mountains, we see the six-armed form of Vajra, the male counterpart of the Hindu goddess Kali. Kali reigns over one short span on the calendar of solar aeons. However, her yuga is considered extremely unlucky. Vajra is the male version of Kali, and Kali Yuga is a period of time on a solar aeon calendar. Vajra, the male concept of a period of time marked by very bad luck. This depiction of Vajra is a depiction of a wrathful deity, mind state, which is nothing but a negative reflection of the self, and can be changed to a peaceful deity reflection simply by calming the mind state. When Buddha applied this method of existential implosion of all referential meanings surrounding and reinforcing the misperceived illusory appearance of materially existent reality to his own reflection, he found he could not only influence the ripples on the surface with his thoughts, but could communicate to the reflection that then arose through the pond surface from the other side of the mirror. As the reflection he manifested became more and more tangible, Buddha himself became less and less so, and instead more and more ethereal. He embodied the five tattvas and the seven chakras, held his hands in mudras, and chanted a mantra. 
As he dissolved into oneness with the Sri Yantra, he was gradually shedding his innermost self, his ego, trait by trait, into the evil Mara. In this Tibetan Tonka painting, we see the wheel of the six lokas, or realms of bodily reincarnation after the death of one's own currently living body now. The revolution of ev evolution through these six local realms is clockwise around the wheel. The wheel of six lokas or worlds we can reincarnate into are clockwise from upper right. The world of fools, the world of hell where we are tortured by demons, the world of creatures where we come back as an animal, the world of philosophers, the world of sages, and the world of Buddha. The six loka wheel spins forever under the ever unblinking third eye of Vajra, the male Kali of the Yuga. And as this six loka realm became more manifest, Buddha became less manifest. Then Buddha said to Mara, There is no you, for you are only a reflection of me and there is no longer such a thing as me. With this, Mara, the reflection of Buddha's self, ceased to exist, and as he saw his own reflection evaporate from the pond below him, Siddhartha Gautama Buddha also ceased to exist. He achieved the trance state called Samadhi by Buddhists and Nirvana by Hindus. He became pure mind, and ceased being matter. The East Part 2b The Gods Part 2b 1 Churning the Sea of Milk At the Temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, we find this high-relief carving of the Divas of all good and the Asuras of all evil, playing tug-of-war on a snake wrapped around a pole in the middle between the good and evil demigods. Hanuman, the monkey god, perches atop this pillar. This column penetrates through a hole beneath the feet of the demigods and churns the sea of milk. That is, the Milky Way galaxy is caused to rotate into its six spiral arms around its core by this action. The result, the stardust that seeds life onto planets like our own at key times, was called Amrita, the elixir of immortal life. A separate low relief, also from the Angkor Wat temple, depicts the same scene. At the extreme furthest right end of the serpent, on the side with the good divas, pulls Indra, his triple-faced form symbolizing himself as Vishnu, Buddha, and Krishna in one. The serpent itself is Vasuki, king of the Naga, the snake gods, there is little hope in achieving through this brief presentation the immense scope of scale and size the Angkor Wat carving covers. It wraps around an entire pagoda of the temple and is intricately carved in sandstone with 88 divas and 92 asuras on either side of the central pillar motif. We see here the central pillar presided over by Vishnu in his forearm form. In one hand, Vishnu holds a sword. In another hand, he holds a nautilus snail shell symbolic of the elixir vitae of Buddhist heritage, called Soma. In the other two hands, he holds the enormous serpent king Vasuki, assisting the divas on the right and Asuras on the left, in their task of churning the sea of milk. 
across another vast distance of figures pulling the snake like a rope, this time a long, repetitive cycle, duplicating the same characteristics of the first in the series the entire subsequent number of times. Just as there were 88 divas, angels, to the right side of Vishnu at the center, so too are there 92 asuras, demons, to the left. Following this vast distance of stylistically stamped, individual hand-carved lesser minions, we arrive at the character on the opposite side of Vishnu from Indra. Just as Indra symbolized Vishnu in the future, and Vishnu stood for himself in the present, then the past form of Vishnu was King Bali, a natural-born Asura who nevertheless conquered the universe of all the other Asuras, the Divas, and even of Indra. Bali ultimately lost the entirety of his empire when Vishnu, in the avatar of Vamana, tricked Bali into granting it back to him. The record of these events in Rigvedic history describes Vishnu's betrayal of his ally, Bali, against Indra. However, the cause Vishnu brought good King Bali of the evil Asuras and the Demiurge, Indra, over the good Divas together for, depicted on the walls of Angor Wat in plural places, that is, the churning of the Sea of Milk, was more important than their prior rivalry. Vishnu, it turned out, was only testing King Bali to strengthen him by his apparent betrayal, and Vishnu was only testing Indra to strengthen him by siding with his opponent, King Bali. Thus, from this series of tests, Vishnu elected King Bali and his 92 Asura demons to hold on to the head of Naga, King Vasuki, while the position of holding the tail of the great snake was allotted to Indra and his army of 88 loyal divas. The entire premise is a metaphor for three traits of the forward-flowing time stream in the past to future direction, measured by the arrow of entropy. The Hindu Trimurti of Brahma the Creator, Vishnu the Preserver, and Shiva the Destroyer form the same dialectical corkscrew-shaped cycle over time. Contemporary to the height of Vedic-era civilization in the Indus River Valley of the Indian subcontinent was the unification of the upper, southern, and lower northern kingdoms of the Nile River Valley of northeastern Africa. Both depicted many of the same ideas in their cosmological alphabetic pantheon. While the Rig Vedas described the Naga king snake Vasuki extended between the good divas and the evil Asuras, tied about a pole and pulled to churn the sea of milk, we see in this image the ancient Egyptian equivalent for this conception of time in their expansion of the single moment of death, symbolized as the weighing of the soul.